project uh, focused on the show South Park and uh, more specifically the topic of immigration. I wanted to see how the satirical cartoon uses how it portrays a satire on the topic of immigration over the years as a change involves along with the issue. In this case, I um, looked at three episodes labeled Goobacks, Where is or, Last the Mexicans, and Where is My Country Gone? And I wanted to see how the episodes um, aired along with the elections, how they changed and used their satire. I found that they went from subtly hinting Mexican portrayals in the first episode to directly portraying the Mexicans um, very broadly in the second episode. While the third episode it really took a hybrid approach and um, directly portrayed the ideals and image of Donald Trump from the 2016 election, but subtly hinted that Mexican immigration by the portrayal of Canadians in the episode. As for uh, why I chose the topic, um, I love the show South Park. I've been watching it for many years. And after the 2016 election, I felt very politically motivated from it. And decided that I should really combine these two things I love very much. As for the reason I chose to put for the stuff on, the, on my board, I wanted to feature uh, scenes from the episodes in the center to kind of draw attention and have a visual representation of the characters and the way we're trying stuff. As for the stuff on the side, I wanted to use the um, IMRD or RD model, introduction, methods, research, conclusion. And I wanted to portray that so people can um, understand the project more broadly. My project uh, was assigned in ENC 1101, um, and my project is on the Brat Tony Rape case and how the writer Tony Ray Fox was able to use her Sports Grid website as a way to make change in her discourse community. She was able to bring up the topics of social injustice, bias, and white supremacy, and was able to convince her audience that no matter who you are, it is wrong to commit a crime and that you should be punished for the crime that you commit. I did my project on writing in the preschool classroom and so I wanted to see how teachers are using preschool curriculum to help foster child development and help prepare kids for kindergarten. And so the particular class that I was looking at uses a curriculum called Get Set for School which is a teacher directed and a child directed curriculum which means that the teachers both have formal lessons but they also let the kids explore literacy on their own. And so one of the biggest parts of my research included Mapman. And so the students would create Mapman on the floor and then they would go back to their tables and they draw out Mapman. And in doing so, they were subconsciously learning how to create letters like the C letter and the L letter of Mapman. And yeah, so I just explored that and all the different activities of this particular curriculum. I am a preschool ballet teacher and I volunteer at Florida Hospital for Children so I work with kids a lot and I just thought it would be interesting to see like how kids acquire literacy. I um, worked on my project through a couple different methods. I did some initial primary research on different curriculum and like different things that public and private schools have used in the past. And then I also did interviews with the particular school that I was researching to see what type of curriculum they used in the past and what type of curriculum they're using now and just kind of like the positives and negatives of it and just how they thought it was going. So my project was about the benefits of counseling. Um, and at first what I wanted to do is I wanted to look at the academic benefits of counseling, but in going through my research, I kind of realized that I wanted to look at all the benefits of counseling um, because I realized, you know, mental health and well-being is just as important, if not even more important than academics because if you don't have that in line first, you know, how are you going to succeed in other things? So in going through my research, I looked at a lot of different studies um, on counseling. Um, I looked at, most of the studies I looked at were voluntary counseling. Um, I did look at one that was a mandatory counseling program implemented for students who were struggling academically. And what was really interesting with that one is that the mandatory ones showed a lot more significant changes in GPA and the voluntary ones, and I, I think it was because the mandatory one, you know, they're under that pressure to, to do better. 
because um, it was mandatory, of course. But the voluntary one was really interesting because you could see that they had that gradual, you know, that time period to kind of see how everything worked out and the different benefits that they've realized, you know, came out of that for them. Um, and then I also did an observation of a group therapy session and that was really cool because you can see the kind of different perspectives and that it's not always just traditional one-on-one -on -one therapy and that there's different, you know, types of therapy you can go through because it just kind of works for different people. I chose my topic because I'm a psych major and I want to one day go into counseling. Um, and I think that there's kind of like a stigma surrounding counseling, especially with young younger kids, teens, young adults, you know, we get really stressed out, we procrastinate, and we get super overwhelmed that sometimes we don't know how to deal with that. And a lot of the time we don't think, you know, we can go to help, get, get help or talk to someone. It's not always, you know, because there's something wrong with us. And that's what we think a lot of our friends might perceive us as. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. And it's here for us. And if it wasn't here, you know, if someone, it wouldn't be put here if someone didn't think it would help us. Um, and so that it's just kind of something that people should be more aware of. And you Utilize, you know, instead of thinking that we'd have to go because there's a problem. The purpose of my project was to figure out what kind of rhetoric do advertisers use in order to target young adults, but specifically college-age students. First, after doing my review of the literature, I did a content analysis for a Wendy's advertisement, um, which was funny, but it also had like really visual, like fresh cues. And based off of my experience, my content analysis, I created a survey. The survey had four parts, and each part had two advertisements that I would have the respondent pick which one did they find was the most effective and explain why. I had some respondents do this, and after that, I read all the responses, and I coded some key concepts that kept appearing. I tallied up how many times it appeared, and broke that data into divided by age and by gender. I chose my topic specifically on advertising and marketing techniques because I wanted to see how people's minds work. I'm a psychology major, so I find it like, really interesting to see like what tricks our brains and what tricks our senses to want to purchase a product, especially because the foods that I talk about are unhealthy, like, and we know that. So what is so compelling that makes us buy this stuff that we know is bad for us? project is covering how self-reflective assignments done at the end of a service learning program benefit the education community. Um, I chose this project, it's actually kind of complicated I chose this project. I started just looking at how service learning benefits the education community, but that's so broad and I wanted to make sure I was doing my own research and not just summarizing other people's research. So I narrowed it down to the self-reflective assignment at the end specifically, how that one piece of the puzzle really benefits the community. So since that's not really that researched, I had to really focus primarily on just my primary sources. I had to make sure that those were the meat of my research. So I did three different interviews, one with a teacher who did service learning in college, one who didn't, and a current UCF student who did service learning and the post-reflective assignment. And that gave a lot of perspective into how self-reflective assignments made a difference at the end, how it's making a difference now. Since it was mostly primary, I used my secondary sources as a foundation to build my research off of. And once I had coded my interviews, found some themes, and put everything together, I came up with basically three main themes that self-reflective assignments at the end really key into diversity in the schools, how field experience um, grow teachers and get them ready to be in the field of teaching and have their own classroom, and how it really connects students at a university to the community, how they go out there and represent themselves as part of the community, and it doesn't just make it a community and a school, it makes them one unit together and really gives them a good means of communication about the topic. The project is basically about starting a conversation with different people that come from different walks of life. So the gist of the project was having four different individuals. Myself, I identify as a Latina woman. Josh, who is more of a common perspective. Um, so not your, your everyday, not as politically involved. Then we have Laura, she is a white woman. And then Zeus, who is also Hispanic, but to the average person he can be perceived as a white male which can come with certain privileges but he is in fact Hispanic 
so the general gist was just giving different topics around election time in order, and then get different perspectives. For example, during episode two, we talked about affirmative action, we talked about net neutrality, and we talked about those hard-hitting subjects that can be difficult for other people to talk about. But they're also very important to have different perspectives about. Um, uh, as a result of this project, I did learn that many people tend to censor themselves based on their backgrounds and their perspectives. So based on my background, I can sometimes choose not to speak upon a subject, even though my opinion can be very important. So this research just adds to the conversation that it's important to be aware that based on different backgrounds, people might try and search for themselves, but it's important to create that open space and start that conversation. I chose this project because I was inspired by different lectures that I attended that talked about social inequality and race, and I, visual, I visually saw other people get uncomfortable when bringing up these subjects, so I wanted to start these meaningful conversations with other people. I put this project together by basically reaching out to UCF's um, OSI Productions and I basically pitched my idea and tried to get it the podcasting space scheduled for this project. I obtained different schedules for all the participants and I researched every single topic and tried to get different sources for each topic in order to enrich the conversation with facts.